Hey guys, it's Jessica Coulter, the CEO of Ace Cookie Tutoring. Today we're going to be talking about our newest subject. So we are so happy to have Adam here with us today. He is going to be telling you all about different computer hardware parts. Okay, so if you're curious about Adam, here is his biography. So he graduated from Missouri S&T, he's got his computer engineering degree, and he's also a mega PC gamer and hobbyist programmer. So we are so happy to have him here with us today. He's going to be teaching you everything you ever want to know about the inside of a computer. So if you have any questions, hopefully you will learn everything you need or want to know, and uh, he'll be happy to work with new students wanting to program and build computers. So thanks so much. I'll turn it over to him. Thank you, Jessica. Now we're going to talk about the four functions of a computer. The computer can do four basic operations, and all of the parts in a computer need to work together to perform these operations. These are input data, store data, process data, and output data. Today we're going to take a look at seven main components inside of a personal computer. The first is the motherboard. And we have the central processing unit, the graphics processing unit, the random access memory, the storage devices, the power supply unit, and the cooling devices. The motherboard is basically the backbone of the PC. All the other components connect to the motherboard. And in addition to connecting all the components together, the motherboard provides the input and output connections on the exterior of the PC. Hey guys, hope you are enjoying the video and just wanted to reach out to anyone who is looking for some one-on-one -on -one help. Maybe you are really interested about computers and you just don't know where to start. Adam would love to work with you one-on-one -on -one and teach you all about different hardware of computers and maybe even get you introduced to programming if that's something you're looking for. So just go to that link on your screen and book a lesson. Choose a time and day that works best for you. It's acecookietutoring.com forward slash book online. Okay, let's go ahead and get back to the video. The central processing unit, also called the CPU, is the brain of the PC. It executes all of your program code, your software, your operating system, your games, and it does this by performing mathematical and logical calculations. A CPU may contain one or more independent processing units called cores. The next major part of the computer is the graphics processing unit, also called the GPU. It's a specialized processing unit for image, video, and 3D rendering tasks. It basically assists the CPU on these particular tasks because they require a lot of processing. There are two types of graphics processing units. There are integrated and there are discrete. Integrated graphics processors are built into the CPU. So they're on the same chip. And these are very common in non-gaming laptops. They're not super powerful, but they're power efficient. They're simple and they're easy to build into laptops. If you need a bit more power, a discrete graphics card, which we can see in the picture, is a graphics processor that's on its own card or chip installed into the motherboard, in addition to the CPU. And these discrete graphics cards are recommended for gaming and video editing tasks, where you need a lot of graphical power. The graphics card is also responsible for providing video output to your monitor. Next, we have the random access memory, also called RAM. This is essentially a short-term memory storage device. It stores the data that is actively being used by the open programs and software, but it loses its data contents when it's powered off. We have this in the computer because it's extremely fast. Okay guys, we have learned about four parts of the computer so far. So before we move on to the next three, I just want to take a quick break and ask you, what's the brain of the computer? So that's something Adam's already taught us. So are you ready? The brain of the computer is the central processing unit. So if you missed that, I might go back 
to that slide about the central processing unit because Adam explained it to us about what all it does and why it's important. All right, we're going to go ahead and learn about the next part of the computer. Hey guys, Jessica again. Just want to check in and see how you were doing. Also wanted to let you know that if you were looking for some more videos about computers, Adam would be more than glad to make some more for you. Just leave us a comment below the video with the next subject you'd like to know about computers. And uh, if tomorrow you're looking for some homework help, maybe for middle school math, or maybe English and a paper is just not going well for you, want to let you know we have a bunch of tutorials. Just go to that link there on the screen, acecookietutoring.com forward slash tutorial, and you'll find a wide variety of free resources that you can use. And uh, again, we would love to help you learn more about computers or maybe something about a different subject. So back to the next slide. Next, we're going to talk about the storage devices. These are long-term memory storage devices, as opposed to the short-term memory of the RAM we talked about earlier. There are two main types of storage devices, the hard disk drive, or HDD, and the solid state drive, the SSD. The hard disk drive is slower than the SSD, the solid state drive. It's also lower cost, and it's best for storing infrequently accessed large content like videos, music, pictures, documents, but not like software, which is you want to access quickly. A solid state drive, on the other hand, is faster than a hard disk drive, although still slower than RAM. It is a higher cost than a hard disk drive, and it's best for frequently accessed programs like your operating system, your applications, your games, and other things that you want to be able to access really quickly. Both of these devices are slower than your RAM, but their benefit is that they do not lose their contents when powered off, which makes them good for permanent storage. Okay, it's quiz time. Here is your second question. What storage device would I use for pictures? So Adam just told us all about SSDs and HDDs. So do you remember which one we should use for pictures? Well, here you go. The answer is a hard disk drive. That's what we'd want to use for pictures. Now we've already talked about the main parts of a computer that do the processing, but there are two more remaining components that I want to talk about. These are basically accessories that support the other components. The first of these is the power supply unit, or PSU. And this supplies the electrical energy to all the other parts of the PC. So a computer runs on electricity and all the parts need power. So this box converts high voltage electricity from the wall into lower voltages that are used by the various PC parts. Last but not least, we have our cooling devices. These are the last component of the PC that I want to talk about. PC parts, especially the CPU and the GPU, can get hot during operation. They consume a lot of energy, and then they need specialized devices to keep them cool. The first such device is a heat sink. A heat sink is a metal block that absorbs heat from components and then radiates it into the air using metal fins. To assist a heat sink, we usually attach a fan to it. The fan blows air through the fins of the heat sink to cool it quickly. But if we want to get fancy, or we're using really hot components that use a lot of energy, we can go to water cooling. Water cooling is where you have specialized heat sinks called water blocks, and then you pump water through them, and the water absorbs the heat much quicker than the air does with a regular heat sink. All right, guys, that's everything we have for you. So just want to do a quick review here. So Adam told us there were four functions of a computer. We had input data, store data, process data, and output data. So with all those different parts he told us about, I just want to make sure you know which item performs what function. So for inputting data, that's going to be the motherboard. Now to store data, we had two different devices. We had RAM. 
and then we had storage devices. So remember, short term versus long term. And then process data, we have that CPU, and we have the GPU. All right, and finally, we go to output data, and that is the motherboard. All right, so we have one more thing. The very last thing that does output data is the GPU. So those are the four functions and all the devices that perform each of those functions. Finally, I wanted to show you a picture of it all put together. This is one of my personal computer builds, and I've labeled everything with arrows pointing at the various components. We have a fan and a water cooler. The water cooler is actually the whole unit with the little tubes that go up to the thing that says Corsair on it. That whole unit is called the water cooler. The fan is blowing through the water cooler out the back of the case. Then we have the motherboard, the whole big circuit board behind all of the other components, that whole big blue board, that's the motherboard. We have the graphics processing unit, which is the card near the bottom middle of the case. Then we have the power supply unit, which is the box at the bottom of the case, and all the wires that run out of it connecting to all the other components. We have the RAM, which are installed in the little slots on the motherboard. And then the CPU is a chip that's located underneath the water block that we can see there, the round um, Corsair part. Underneath that is the CPU chip. Then we have an SSD, a solid state storage device, mounted in the front of the case. All right, guys, that is everything we have for you. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have learned a lot about the different functions of those computer parts. And I hope those pictures were helpful in seeing Adam's computer and being able to identify what goes where. So if you have any more questions about computer hardware, or maybe you would like to talk to Adam about actually building your own computer, feel free to book a lesson online at www.acecookietutoring.com forward slash book online. And if you're looking for other videos like this one, or maybe others about more tool subjects, if you will, we do have math, science, social study, all that good stuff online, and we'll be creating resources as well. And finally, just want to let you know, we do have an email list. So if you'd like to be kept in the loop with our monthly specials and receive our monthly newsletter, just shoot us an email at acecookietutoring at gmail.com, and we'd love to add you to our list. So thank you so much for your time, and uh, we look forward to talking to you.